Hey, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things, and I have a very special guest, Kelsey Klimbara. She is the content manager for 1517. She is also the host of a brand new and really awesome podcast called Outside of Ourselves. You should look it up on iTunes. Um, it is part of the 1517 Podcast Network, and she's sitting down with just a, a lot of really great guests, and we're, we're learning about the gospel. Uh, so it's, it's by and large what we're going to do today, too. Kelsey, how are you? I talked a lot. No, you're good. I'm I'm doing well. So good to see you, Pastor Goodman, and uh, I'm glad that I get to chat with you today. Oh, it's thrilled to have you back. Every time I get to, to sort of listen to you talk, I learn a couple of things and take some notes. So uh, I'm Thank thrilled you. that you're joining us here again today. Thanks so, so much. Uh, we, we were talking a little bit uh, via email before we, we sat down to record about what yeah. to sort of talk about today. And, and you mentioned one that that's just really timely in uh, 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 at least an online culture that seems to hate everybody that's not me. So how do we talk to people who disagree with us? Yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to start by saying I am by no means an expert at this. And I think I've probably learned um, most of what I know about this by, by my failures, by being really bad at talking to people, by making mistakes. Um, uh, over, you know, the span of my, my short life so far, but, um, this is a hard thing to do, right? We all know that, um, in general, it's hard to talk with people we disagree with. And then in today's world where everything feels so polarized, whether we're talking about politics or, uh, belief systems or backgrounds, it's, it, it can feel scary to enter a conversation knowing there's going to be disagreements. Um, and then you add in social media and uh, kind of online culture, it's easier sometimes to just avoid those conversations, whether whether that means you just don't have them or you kind of have them um, in this online sphere, which can happen. I think there can be some good discussion, but um, that limits our ability to interact person to person. So I think whenever you're um, whenever you're thinking about uh, entering into a conversation with someone that agrees differently with you than you, a couple of things to uh, kind of think about are trying to enter that conversation, uh, knowing that you are inadequate and um, with the hope that because of that, you will be able to enter that conversation with curiosity. So um, going at things uh, with inadequacy and curiosity, I think are a good place to start, especially as a Christian. Uh, and I would say the inade inadequacy part comes in because uh, of our confession in Christ. So in Christ, uh, we confess Christ because we know we are first and foremost sinners. We need, we need him. And so um, as sinners, we know that we are, we are limited. We are, we are sinful and um, therefore we're inadequate. We're inadequate, just like the person we're talking to. Um, and so it kind of puts us on some common ground with them. Um, and along those lines, too, if we're inadequate, we don't know everything. Uh, we don't know what this person has been through. We don't know their experience. And so we're able to kind of uh, come to them in humility and I think with a good, a good bit of patience, um, um, knowing that we don't have all of the answers. And that then leads to, I think, this approach of curiosity being able to kind of say, well, tell me about why you believe this. Um, I may not, I may not agree, but I'd love to know like why exactly you hold this belief or you think about things in this way. And I know for me, whenever I've entered a conversation that way, being able to ask more questions than assert um, truths, even if they are truths that I will hold to, it allows a person to be a lot more honest and comfortable and vulnerable um, than if I'm trying to shout them down or uh, or even just argue them down with with what I think is is black and white truth. 
So I just talked a lot too. I hope that that was Oh, that's helpful. fantastic. That's, that's sort of a really sort of profound thing for us to think about, almost especially as Lutherans, uh, because when it comes to being a Lutheran, um, I think a lot of us are sort of known for arguing with people on the internet. And because we're, we're good at winning arguments when it comes to theology, because we cheat, like we're not, none of us are brilliant. It's just that we have the right answers in a lot of what was done for us by the people ahead of us. And we also have Luther, who was sort of like an angry guy on Twitter long before that was a, a thing. Yeah. Um, and so everybody's just out there wanting to win an argument. And we, we come in with this identity that we are right, we will win, and we will show you why you're wrong. But that's that's actually not the Lutheran identity. Um, what, what you sort of painted was actually the Lutheran identity is one who confesses that we're sinners in need of a savior. And so mm -hmm. to enter into this conversation, not not with sort of the picture of Luther banging out a tweet, but but rather with Luther confessing his his sin um, and and. Mm -hmm thanking God for, for Christ's mercy, that's a better place to start. And, and that shapes then the discussion that, that follows it. If, if it, you're not simply there to win a fight, to, to prove somebody else yeah. wrong, then all of a sudden, not only might you learn something, but you might even be able to help somebody else, right? Right, exactly. That's, I think most people today uh, only want someone to listen to them. Um, they, they, they crave that because we don't, we don't have that. We don't have people that are close to us to listen and so if you can be that for a person and not in the sense of be that for a person so then you can do x y and z but truly just love on a person by listening to them uh that's going to make a world of difference and you know you might never change their mind about something um but you there there are then I, I think there's a lot more potential and trust being built for that person to um not only confess their problems to you, but then to listen to hopefully a response that is rooted in the gospel and the good news that um, Christ has forgiven them and Christ has freed them. And, um, and that's, that's a really beautiful thing, but especially in today's world, <laughs> which is not Martin Luther, it's not the 16th century anymore. We don't, we don't operate uh, in this world of, polemics is the word that, you know, we would use to kind of describe the way that Luther argued. That's, that is not a way that people most often in today's world are going, are going to listen or are going to hear you. And so I think that's, that's okay to admit um, uh, the way that we have, that we understand things has changed um, over time. And so good to keep that in mind when you are entering into any conversation like this. So you mentioned polemics being the, the way that uh, all of these these old theological arguments went. And honestly, um, th there's 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 a side where you sort of see that, but it's it's not even about facts anymore. How do people tend to then, I, I mean, I, I don't wanna say argue, but kind of do wanna ask argue. How do people argue today then if it's not polemically? Um, I don't think people even argue. I think that that's, what I see is there's a lot of shouting uh, about sides and there's not really an argument where, because I think an argument is uh, traditionally where both sides state their, their case, they make their case, and then the other side listens and responds. And I don't think there's any listening. There's just a lot of shouting. So I don't know if that uh, answers the question. But I think maybe we have polemics without argument we, because we just have shouting matches and we have uh, mudslinging going on and there's not really any, any sort of argument that's based on reason or fact or empathy for the, the person on the other side. You're right. In a lot of ways, it, it, it feels like an identity more than, than a, a yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's also that's problematic because now if I disagree with you, I, I'm not trying to teach you something or help you with something or, or, or even just simply exist in a world where two people can, can have differing opinions about a thing, but now it's an assault on who you are or, or your people. And yeah. that's something that, that almost has to be met with a, a rock or two to throw at somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, the, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about our identity in Christ, right? Is that we don't, we simultaneously have nothing to prove and nothing to lose. Um, and so that means that you can be patient and gracious in, uh, and 
and let the other person speak and have their moment in a conversation. But it also means that you can stand up for the confidence that you have in Christ when you need to. And you can even ask for forgiveness when you do go about talking in a way that's um, maybe not as thoughtful or as kind as, as you should have been. So it, it really frees you. The fact that you are, your identity is in Christ, which means you are righteous because of him. You're not righteous because of your own words. Uh, it frees you to, to both kind of slow down in these conversations, but also to speak out when you need to, um, and speak out without fear of, potential retribution that you're going to disagree and you're going to say things that run a little bit counterintuitive to the way that the world thinks. Right. And, and we can even sort of probably push on that outside of ourselves a little bit too. Um, in that, well, Jesus died for my neighbor too, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And that's, I think that that is, um, something that's missing so much in today's world and, you know, has probably always always been a problem because we we are sinners and we're fallen but when you that christ died for your neighbor and christ loves your neighbor it um we're back to that kind of that common ground of inadequacy which is this is something um dave zoll talks a lot about dave zoll from mockingbird ministries um he just wrote a book low anthropology which is filled with this sort of stuff but uh it puts you on on common ground with people, um, knowing that you both need a savior. You're both in the same boat. You're no better than than the person that you're speaking to. Um, and I think this is kind of along the same lines, knowing that Christ or God has God has always worked through sinners. So um, knowing that you as a that He's working through you despite your sin to speak to your neighbor and that um, he's going to do the same for you through the the mouths of others uh, gives you, gives us a sense of community and, and belonging. That's really important to the way that God works in our world. And, and hope too, because it's not even yeah. just that we sort of are, are all broken by sin down here, but that these are the ones that not Christ redeems and that Christ yes. works. And that means that even though I, I'm going to have to sit down and have a conversation where somebody's not going to, I'm afraid, at least in my anxiety, somebody's not going to like what I have to say, and somebody might not even like me because of it. This is a place where God can work by the power of the Spirit. This is where the gospel thrives. It's when sinners need a Savior, and well, we got the sin, but we've also got the Savior. Yes, yeah, that's that's so true, and you're right. That is our hope, and that makes those conversations worthwhile. It makes those conversations so much more worthwhile than saying, you know what, I just can't, and I can't engage with this person, labeling them as toxic, uh, and cutting, cutting off a relationship, which, um, is, is something that I think is easy to do in online culture. You can just say, well, you can kind of wash your hands of a person and move on. Um, we have the hope that God is working in, in conversation. Um, and, and that means that even though it's going to be tough, and there's going to be mistakes made, um, it's worthwhile. Great. Um, One kind of final question for this. Um, You you paint a real big picture of hope, but I've also been to the internet. Um, So I I want (laughs) to, I guess I want to sort of ask if there's a distinction, at least uh, as you see things when we start to approach this. So there are, there are the people out there who are are genuinely either speaking in angst out of, out of pain or, or out of, 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 um, uh, out of a a desire to sort of defend a wound in in a lot of ways. There are people who, who heartfelt uh, and truly believe a thing and they're willing to, to stand on it. And they're also just sort of the trolls, the, the ones yeah. who just want to watch the world burn. And, and they've made their decisions and they, they would rather see somebody hurt than somebody helped. How do you start to figure out the difference? How do you figure out um, who to engage with so that when yeah. you sit talk with somebody you disagree with, you, you can start to, to find a, a pattern that, that's going to build up and not one that just sort of revels in somebody who only wants to have a fight? Yeah, I I mean, I think it's always wise to try to have these conversations as much as you can face to face in person, um, because 
though you know that if you are face to face with a person, that is probably a person in your life um, that you're seeing on a regular basis and interacting on with on a regular basis. Trolls are always going to be there, and don't let them uh, take up rent free space in your head. Like they, those types of people, and though I, I am trying to think of ways that you can kind of tell who is a troll versus who's not. I mean, I, I think a troll is someone that you don't know um, that's on the internet and um, that you haven't really formed a relationship with, even if it's on, even even if it's like an online uh, relationship and if they're only coming at you with negative comments, they're not worth in, engaging with because they're clearly not um, interested in having kind of a, a back and forth dialogue. Um, now, if you if a friend of yours in real life is coming at you online as a troll, that might be worth some sort of conversation at some point of like, hey, why are you, you know, um, attacking me with negative comments or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think trolls are probably most often not worth engaging with because I just I think that they're um, enga that engagement isn't really going to do anything but make things worse and take a lot of energy uh from you i don't know if that's helpful no it is um and it's kind of got me thinking like i i, I don't want to to sort of come out in, in a self-righteous way because lord have mercy on me a sinner but th this whole conversation has been sort of framed in how to help your neighbor how, how to listen and engage so that your your ideas can be shared because you actually think they're helpful if if somebody's only set out to tear other people's ideas down that's a different thing than going out to try and share a, an idea that might be better if somebody's yeah. only trying to tear something down that that might be a sign that this is this is not a place to engage yeah and that doesn't mean they're uh not a they're not worth engaging with at some point or they're not a person that's um not worth loving and praying for but in that specific conversation it might just be worth leaving that and not expending energy or, or thought on it that's a great yeah. point absolutely um any kind of closing thoughts um i think yeah, you, you've already stated this so clearly, but just remembering um, not only that you are a sinner in need of God's grace and you have that, but also like you said that Christ has died for your neighbor, um, that, that he loves your neighbor uh, is just a helpful kind of reorientation in the midst of um, situations where our emotions are hot, running high and we can be frustrated or upset with someone to kind of uh, hear that, remind yourself of that. And at the same time that Christ has died for you, that um, that, that um, forgiveness is the perfect place to start and end these conversations is, um, is something I, I hope people are encouraged by and, and hear in our conversation. Absolutely. So uh, Kelsey Klimbara, she has an MA in, uh, what, what is it, uh, Reformation Theology. Uh, she is the uh, content manager for 1517. She's the host of a podcast called Outside of Ourselves that you should abs absolutely look up. Um, but but she's also, she's a baptized Christian. Um, so let's, let's thanks be to God. Kelsey, thanks for coming on the, the Drive School podcast and uh, hope to see you again real soon. Of course. Thanks so much.